it's going to happen at any point. And there's, with that, it's not a problem. Now, of course, your brain for free will come up with like 50 million reasons why this is a major issue, a huge issue. If you don't fix it now, you're going to be out on the streets, you know, like you're going to lose your business. You know, it can catastrophize on like on a sixpence your brain. So it's going to offer you all this for free. We don't really want that. What we want is problem solving questions. You're listening to the Sales Today podcast, and I'm your host, Fred Copestake. On this podcast, we explore how sales professionals can develop a modern approach to winning business, the application of virtual selling techniques, how to create meaningful business relationships, and much more. Why not take our free collaborative selling scorecard to see how your sales approach suits today's environment? You'll find a link in the show notes. And welcome to this episode of the Sales Today podcast, where I'm delighted to be joined by Helen Tebay, who is the sales lady. Hi. Hello, Fred. <laughs> Thank you for having me on. Thank you. No, it's an absolute pleasure. Um, so, I mean, I need to talk about all things sales or many things. We've just been having a little chat. Mm -hmm. But particularly where you focus is working with sort of microservice based business owners. Um, yeah. you have a responsibility for selling and yeah. helping yeah, them get their head around stuff. Yeah, when it's just you, maybe you've got a couple of other people in your business, but ultimately the sales and bringing the sales in relies on you and you don't like selling. <laughs> That's where I come in. Yeah, I help business owners to sell and market their business, um, just really engage more with selling and sales more positively. You're just going to make more money, like for sure. So yeah, that's what I help yeah my clients with yeah i mean and, and a lot of that stuff is applicable across the board we could take it to yeah. quite a large sales team we could take it to yeah. corporate multinational there'll be some similar things um, absolutely if you're responsible for selling and you've found yourself in what we'd call a little sales slump where things are not going so well you haven't made sales in a while you're kind of looking at your target or your budget that you've set or you might have had that set for you if you work for someone and you think I'm a million miles away, what's the point? I might as well just go and get another job. Like whatever kind of flavor of despair that you give yourself on that particular day, um, I want you to listen to this podcast because it's going to help. Flavor of despair. We could actually just start listing all these symptoms of yeah. that and have a look go away feeling so downhearted. <laughs> yeah, and it um, happens. Yeah, absolutely. But it, it happens but if we, to anyone. Yeah, but if we if we just sort of, highlight what some of the symptoms might be i mean you probably know because you're feeling pretty uncomfortable and there ain't orders coming in through the door but some of the things which are indicative we might be on that downward that downward shift yeah yeah so i would say um and this is one of the points that i mentioned actually um is to have a look at what has been happening the last couple of months you will know instinctively as a business owner you might not want to know you might not want to take the responsibility for it, but you you will know you will have backed off somehow. Um, it might be a thought that you've got. It might be just like inactivity. So whenever I've when I had a sales slump recently, I went back and I looked at the the kind of ninety days prior because um, it didn't happen on that day. You know when I thought hmm, things seem to have slowed down. It's not that moment that it happened. It was the ninety days before, and I'd stopped networking. I had stopped driving. I had like an amazing um, like situation where I just had this intense anxiety about driving and going places. So I stopped going and I had a look at the figures and 80% of my revenue comes from networking and meeting people. So is it any wonder that now, like 90 days later, I've stopped doing that, that there's a bit of a slump in the sales. But in that moment, I'm like, well, I, I just don't know what's happened. Clearly it's the market. I don't, I don't know. You know, it like catches you off guard. Um, panic is a word that people use a lot and that's for any salesperson if you're employed or like when you're in business like there's just that sheer panic and that thought that something's gone wrong yeah so the, I think there's sometimes that that kind of almost like that mind goes blank and you sort of say yeah. I don't know what to do yeah and it, I mean as a salesperson it's very hard to turn around somebody and say that yeah, and as very, a business yeah. owner, I mean, a you might not have anyone turn around and say that too. Yeah, but also it's like, well, I'm the boss here. I, I do. I, I should know what to do, but you just don't, yeah. and it's blank. And you, the more you try to think about it, the blanker it goes. 
it's horrible. Yeah, yeah. Says, it's having horrible. Been, I've been through horrible. stuff like that. It's, it's not good. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say you you must have been through it. I've definitely yeah. been through yeah. it a couple of times. I think that's the first kind of point that I wanted to mention was that it's going to happen, and it happens to seasoned sales professionals people who've been in business for a long period of time. Um, it happens at the start, middle, towards the end. Of, it can happen at any point. And just to separate, it's business stuff. It doesn't mean that you're not capable of running a business or you're not worthy enough as a human. But what we tend to do is join the two together. And we're like, oh, well, yeah. just must mean that I'm shit at business. Like I'm not cut out for it. Who am I to think that I could possibly like sell this? No one wants it. And even just me saying this, like, makes me feel down. Like, it pulls me down into, like, this spiral of, like, feeling really, really shit and really panicked and worried and anxious. So, we've, you know, like, we've got to kind of acknowledge that and shift it. That's that's well, the first thing. Well, the irony is you're actually are selling. You're yeah. just selling yourself this story, yes. <laughs> which is really unhelpful. Especially and you're buying it. It's just, and you're buying it. You know, you're closing yeah. every deal with everything that's thought like that. It's like, oh, no, no, no. But no, it's true. And you, 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 you can get into a right, right state with it. Um, yeah. So, well, let's not talk too much about that. We don't want people sort of sat here going, oh, yeah. No. I mean, that, that, I think they'll get it. It's like, yes, yes. I'm in it or yeah. I've responded. It, I, 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 you know, I'll recognize when it comes. What are some of the things? that we can do because i think you said to me actually there's some quite clear steps that if you just take these get control back yeah you'll be in a better place yeah yeah so sure. what, what are we going to do yeah so this is all about action because action is going to break that cycle um we need to think and do something differently if we want to see a different result so first of all you can have a little cry you can have a little moment like just take a day or whatever just own it. It's fine. Doesn't mean you're a shit business owner. Doesn't mean when someone says to you, how's business going? You you have to like crumble or avoid these situations. This is all about taking control and taking action because that's what's going to get you out of this factor. So the first thing is to know that it's going to happen at any point. And this, with that, it's not a problem. Now, of course, your brain for free will come up with like 50 million reasons why this is a major issue, a huge issue. If you don't fix it now, you're going to be out on the streets, you know, like you're going to lose your business. You know, it can catastrophize on like on a sixpence your brain. So it's going to offer you all this for free. We don't really want that. What we want is problem solving questions. So this is what I these these are the steps that I took to get myself out of funks before when I was employed and as a business owner and how I teach my clients to get out of it as well. So the first thing is that nothing's gone wrong. So if we have that narrative it's going to suggest, your brain is going to suggest something's gone wrong. And that gives that panic, that worry, that anxiety. So the first thing is, is to ask yourself some problem solving questions. So what can I do? What one thing can I do to focus on to book in some more sales calls or some more visits or however you sell? Like, what can I do to start speaking to people now? Like, what's the one thing that I could do right now today? Well, I've stopped posting on LinkedIn. I suppose I could do a post, couldn't I? Yes, go and do that. You know, well, I stopped networking. Maybe I just choose a networking event over this next week and get booked on it, get out there, start speaking to people. Like, do that. Go and physically book and pay for it and put it in your diary. Like, not maybe, oh, one day, oh, maybe I'll just wait and see. This is all about giving yourself problem-solving questions. Like, what? why have I got no sales calls booked in? Not something's gone wrong because there's no sales calls. Like, well, well, what is it that I've stopped doing that means that I've got no sales calls booked in? Like, what's happening? So it's like giving yourself more problem-solving questions. Which bit of the offer isn't clear? You know, I don't want to put my offer out because I don't know. I don't like it anymore. Right, which bit, which bit are you going to change? You know, so it's problem-solving questions. I like that. Uh, so you are doing something. You're making yourself doing something. You're you're, you're taking yeah. the first step. Was it the, was it the, the journey of a thousand miles starts with one step type thing? Yeah, yeah. Get some action happening, and even if it's just yes. thinking right to go. Oh, that's simple. Yeah, ah, uh, like it, like it, yeah. like it. Go back yeah. to the things that you like doing. Well, I actually like networking. I just didn't like driving to like networking. And I started going further afield and that's where this anxiety came from. So I'm like, just go back local again. Like, just make it easy. Like, why are you trying to make it really hard? And yeah. 
<laughs> I don't know. Um, you know, do something remote. It's funny, actually. I've got a little Bob the Builder in my office. Um, <laughs> and, and, and the reason that is, is that when I'm in this situation... Or, or something maybe not quite serious, but if my head's just stuck, it's like, I'll come up the builder and just go, can I fix it? And he does. He asks a closed question. Yes, I can. Right. And then that leads you into, well, how am I going to fix it then? Yeah. <laughs> so I've got yeah. a little Bob the Builder there as a prompter that is like, okay, yes, you can fix it. Come on then, let's go into those problem solving questions. What am I going to do? How am I going to do it? What the thing? Yeah. 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 And then the second action is I would go back to your best month financially that you've had. Um, yeah. You might have a couple of spikes. Just go back to to the one that's the most recent, and then look to the sixty to ninety days prior. So two to three days, two to three months prior, and have a look at what you were doing differently. And whenever I ask clients to do this, so like nothing, nothing was different, nothing's changed because you want it to be something external. Your brain wants it to be like, well, it's the market. There's nothing I can do. You know, I'm completely out of control. And you are so much more in control of this. And, and this is a harsh reality, but our actions two, three months ago, maybe even beyond, have created the result that you're seeing now. And so we just really need to go back and have a look. Well, if we've done that and it's slumped, what did we do when it spiked? Like, what were we doing beforehand? Now, it might be that you're doing the same actions, but you've got a different thought and feeling about selling. Maybe you're bored. Maybe you're tired. Maybe you can't be asked anymore. Maybe, you, you know, just like overwhelmed maybe you just don't like selling something happened two three months ago and you're just like i don't know i can't hear another no so just don't want to have a sales call again because it's just too hard and this is all happening like sub level and then suddenly you find yourself in three months time and you're like why have we got no sales calls booked in still going out networking i'm still going out and like putting posts out on linkedin but we're doing it from a really kind of shit low grade low value low quality thought and energy so that's not going to create results. So like go back to your best month, 90, 60 days before. What were you doing that you're no longer doing now? What did you start, stop doing then? What were you thinking, feeling? The answer will be in there. Like mine was networking. And this was like a a like a, a bolt for me out of the blue. And I'm like, how can I be a sales coach? And this oh. shit happened to me and I'm not aware of it. <laughs> I thought this is going to be a really good teaching moment at some point. <laughs> Here yeah. we are. I'm going, to like to, it... I'm going to have to fess up to everybody. But actually, yeah, yeah. that's a well, no, it's a good thing in a way. That it yeah, does it happen helps to everyone. me to help clients. Yeah, yeah massively. Oh, I, 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 I'll, I'll, I'll fess up there. Yeah, you, 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 you've, yeah. you've shared. It's um, I went through a period where I was posting really valuable stuff on LinkedIn. Yeah, I know it's valuable because I got a response to it. You know, and it was about customers issues customers problems customers struggles customers challenges and then every now and again i throw a little cat pick or something like that yeah or a selfie of me doing something interesting and of course they get more engagement and i got a bit addicted to the engagement the dopamine yes. more likes more comments which were from everybody in the whole world not the target market who were caring about the stuff that i was talking about yeah comes down into i've fallen into this rut of yeah look at all this wonderful stuff i'm doing like well it's not wonderful to the customer i was yeah. like go back to that get yourself back in the groove of those things that are working absolutely yeah, really. I, I think it's just so <laughs> it good and it happens and it leads me on to the third point which is to go back to um what people want from you because yeah. you might have drifted a little bit um before i go on to that there's one point that i just want to make because the time of year that this podcast is going out is heading up to some holidays and it'll be the same if you're listening to this and it's just about Christmas time or Easter or you know insert whatever um flavor of distraction you want to put in there but there is this collective thinking that people have around that time of year that nobody buys and I just want to ask yourself what have you bought over the last few weeks because I'm sure you've bought something um so that's not true otherwise would be like Italy manufacturers where they just shut down for a month in August. <laughs> you know, yeah. like the, we we have, you know, businesses all year round. There's always people looking for what you are selling, like right now. Like always. There's always people, even like schools that are shutting down. I've, my brother in law's a headmaster and he's looking and researching about new handymen or like someone to do the solar panels. He's getting quotes, you know, like so. It's just not true. You know, so, you know, that's just when it feels external, it feels like it's out of control. Whereas if you can put yourself back in control with points one and two, 
you're already going to be clawing yourself out of this slump so much faster than someone that's sitting there going a bit victim mentality like there's nothing I can do I'm at control like I'm, I'm at the mercy of like school holidays what can you do that's not going to make you any sales yeah oh th there's always a reason I mean, you can pretty much go through every month, can't you? And say, oh, yes. that's because yeah. oh, it's fine. It's probably fine night or Christmas or whatever or Easter or, yeah, yeah, yeah. Agree with you on that one. So so then we're going into number th to part three is that what, yes. what people want. Yeah. yeah so go okay. back to all the people that have engaged with you in the last year. Like literally do the boring work of like opening up your calendar, having a look at the last kind of six months of people that had sales calls with you, whether they converted or they didn't. Um, if you had site visits that you go to site, if you had people fill out um, a lead magnet so that you've got their email addresses, like you'll have a bunch of people that already know what you do. And it's so much easier to speak to them. I think when you have a sales slump or it slows somehow, I think the panic causes you to go and do something different. And that's usually I'll rush and throw an offer out like a new I'll make a new offer because that'll make me more money. And or like, I'm going to go and have to find a thousand more people to go and sell to because the ones that I'm selling to are not interested. It's again, just a little distraction from your brain than forcing you to have a look at the hard stuff. So like do the boring work, go down, go through and have a look at all the people that have engaged with you in the last year, write them down, make a list and then go and offer them something. Go and reach out, email, message, phone call, whatever you want to do. Say, hey, I, I, I'm curating some content you know it's got to be true it can't be false but I do this quite a bit I'm like I'm trying to find out what my audience finds valuable and it changes it's always like the same flavor but what are you struggling with right now could you help me do you want to jump on a call and in return I'll answer like your top sales questions that you've got you know like oh what can I help you with I've got this offer that I've, I've made I thought of you based on the conversation we had last year can we have another conversation you know you do the boring hard like grunt work it's like the going to the gym three times a week you don't see any result from like weeks one and two and then suddenly you start you know end of month you notice it end of month two other people notice it you know so it's that kind of it's very rare to just throw something out and get like immediate sales but you can when you know your market really well speed that up and so you can just go and speak to a bunch of people that have already engaged with you and ask them some questions ask them what they're struggling with make something sell it to them ask charge them money for it and then like that can sometimes just curate and become another offer but yeah. you know it's this engagement we, we when we're feeling like we're in a bit of a slump the last thing people want to do is put themselves out there and so this compounds the slump it just keeps you in it for longer so the more you can go out, you could do this networking, you could do this like direct message, email, phone, you can do it any which way. But go out and start speaking to people, reach out to them, send them an email, a message, something that's going to help them. It could be I've done this not because I'm in a sales form, I just do this ongoing. This is evergreen work for me. But when I see reports from companies like Gong, for example, that look at sales stats and results and outcomes, if I know someone's struggling with outbound calling and cold calling I've got a podcast on that and I've got these results that Gong have, have published so I've sent it to a couple of people and said I've thought of you with no ulterior motive it's not oh because they might book a call and make a sale with me it's because when you do it from that thought especially when you're in a sales slump that is how it's perceived as like oh I think they just want to make a sale here it feels very salesy so we've got to check ourselves when we're doing this work but like go and put a ton of offer out. If you want 10K in the next month, go and put 10K's worth of value out there. Like how could you do that? And that's point one, problem solving questions. How can I put 10K's worth of value out there this month, this week? Like go and do it. Is it a webinar? Is it tips? Is it a, like a sheet or toolkit? Like what is it? Go and yeah, do it. Oh, a couple of things there. I mean, what, what, one of the things I was going to ask was, when we're in this slump, when we're in this panic, and we can often retreat back into our caves, we go to our like, little comfort zone. Yeah. One of the things that I've noticed, particularly with people that make stuff, so I work with quite a lot of manufacturers, they go and talk more about the stuff they make because they find it easier 
And whereas in the past they might have been successful talking about problems that people have, yeah. and that's where the response came, panic mode, they stop talking about that and they'll start talking about the features of the thing that they do. And, yeah. and of course, that's repelling people because no one really cares, do they? And it's like, check, check that that could be one of the things that's happened. Yeah, absolutely. Because you do weird shit when this stuff happens. <laughs> oh, you look back at it when you're clearer. You, what, was, what was I thinking there? Well, you weren't. You, you, your brain was clouded. That's the problem. Yeah. 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 And, and um, don't feel too disheartened. You know, you can get very disheartened very quickly. This is why action is going to help you with that. Because even if you're like, well, I don't know what networking groups to go to. They didn't work before. It always all works. So just pick something. Pick something, take your best guess at what you think is going to be the best shout of your, you know, the best use of your time. And then just go and find out instead of your brain telling you, well, there's no point. What's the point? If you get that, what's the point? I'd answer it. Well, what is the point? That's what I sometimes say to clients. Well, there's no point. What's the point? <laughs> just answer that for me. What is the point in doing all of this? You know, like see what comes up. Well, like that. Yeah. The, the other thing I think you said that was really important. Well, it's just like a bunch of episodes just in all these just little, little, I know we could do all that one. <laughs> but no, it's creating content. You know, it's putting yeah. stuff out. You know, when, when you're clear of mind and when you know what customers are interested in and you're producing, mm -hmm. you're doing podcasts. I do podcasts, obviously. Mm -hmm. <laughs> We're on it. Yeah. LinkedIn posts, blogs, mm -hmm. anything that you're kind of usefully surrounding yourself with that people will pick up in the moment, but they're there yeah. forever. And yeah. there's one I wrote about, you know, what 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 should I post on LinkedIn or how do I post on LinkedIn? I don't know how many people I've sent that to. I have to scroll miles back. <laughs> yeah. So then I would just say, hang on, man, just post it again. Just do it every month so you know where it is. Bang, have a look at this. This will help you. Yeah. It, you make your life so much easier by having that stuff that you can, yes. you know, you can use. You can, you can deploy yeah. in a useful way. And I think this is where people think, oh, God, I'm going to have to make something new because the existing stuff isn't working. Well, it did work at one point because you sold a lot. So, like, go back to that peak month and see what was different. But it's it's never really fixed by, like, throwing a fast offer out that isn't thought of or by going and selling to a bunch of new people because that all takes time. It's cold and you have to warm it up. So it's like it, it might work, but it's probably going to be your slower route, you know, yeah. Um so, like, for me, I'd always go with, like, your core, like, onion, you know, if you will, like, layer of onion. Go to the, like, root of it and, like, who who already knows what you do? Yeah. And there's no harm in even speaking to people who you network with and say, can we have a one-to-one? -one? Because I've just kind of, like, changed some of the stuff that I'm doing and changed my focus. And I just want to know, like, check you know what I'm doing. Did we ever have those conversations with people? You know, did we just shift and people don't know what you do anymore? That could yeah. be what changed 60 to 90 days ago so yeah. there's always something there's always a little trail but it's been open enough to have a look at it and like having that emotional maturity to be like yeah I think there's something in here that I've done and that's okay because I'm going to fix it I'm going to back myself I'm going to sort it out I'm business owner or I'm the BDM or I'm the account manager I've got this like I can do this so much more empowering so much more like in your control it's like yeah do that Good. instead so then we've got one more element. We've got the fourth. The fourth yeah. Key uh, element. So was... what, what, do we, what do we do now? So yeah, we're doing this. We, we, we're getting on yeah. nicely. We, we, we'll probably be feeling a bit better. Yeah. Stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Which is uh, point four. Mindset is everything. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> which we kind of touched upon throughout all of it. But um, very specific actions. When you take action from being very targeted, very specific, very intentional, it increases confidence and you will make more money if you're more confident and more sure. Instead of like, oh, I'm going to throw like three different offers out because it's price. People are not buying. Everyone's got no money. I'm going to make a really small little offer over here and then a big offer and that. that each offer that you launch, it doesn't matter how much money it is, it's like a new business. You have to work out how to sell and market it. And people are going to have questions and queries and confusion with a £37 offer as they are like a five grand offer. So, you know, like mindset is everything. So like go back to like very intentional, very specific actions, increase that confidence and you will sell more. And with that, we talked about that long term vision, your mission. If you're really locked into it, your mission just cannot possibly be knocked off by a couple of bad months. Like it just can't. It's not possible. Um, you know, and I've heard this the other day. Um, 
feel like I want to credit the person, and I can't remember who said it, but the person who cares the most wins. Just go out and care like a bunch more about getting your clients the best results, about getting very clear on who you offer what to, on like how you do it. Like go out and do that sort of stuff for your clients. I know you're in a slump and that whole thing is like, yeah, but like I haven't got any money. Like I need the money in the bank. So like mine's at great, Helen. Like go and put a load of value out. Where's the money? You, you cannot have money without value exchange. Like if there's no value or impact exchange, there's there's no one can pay you. So you've got to do this and you might have to bolster your business in a slightly different way. And this is where the mindset comes in. I've got business owners that have gone under because they refuse to borrow money. And I'm not about like racking up consumer debt for like shoes and bags and holidays. But if it's for education, if it's for a coach or mentor or a new system or something that you think is going to really help, like, why not find the money to, like, invest in, in the business or they won't pay for something that's going to help them get out of a slump faster because they don't want to see the money dip in, in the bank. So there's all this, like, mindset shit that knocks you off track. So, like, just know that your vision and your mission, it cannot be knocked off by a few bad months. But what are you going to do? How prepared are you to fight for it? Like, for me, I'm not going anywhere. There's no way. Like, I've had slumps before that, like, I think would have finished most business owners. And it's been my own cause, my own doing. And my mission is so strong. It's to influence over a million people to think something differently, like, more positively engaging in sales. Because I didn't have that when I started the sales journey. It was absolutely freaking horrendous. Don't want people, like backing off from the industry thinking that they have to be this aggressive shitty salesperson and so whenever anyone says thanks so much you've really changed the way that I've thought about that that's like another tick in the in okay. the box so like I'm not going anywhere so like when I can't be asked or the sales are bad or whatever it's like I don't it's not that I don't care it's just I don't fixate on that's the wrong thing to get fixated on it's easy to do and I know why people do it but like just try and check your mindset like what are you focusing on everything that's going wrong and how shit it is and if it's like you've got to start focusing on your mission you know just go out and create a, a load of value for people and if you don't know what that value is maybe you're a little bit earlier on in business or maybe you've forgotten go out and ask your clients go ask and go out and ask your audience um i ask people all the time what are you struggling with with sales right now what's hard about selling and they tell me, and then I think, what can I help them with? We've got something, or am I going to go and create something new? Like, what? And that's why webinars and the podcast episodes are created. So, yeah, like, wow. mindset is everything. I, I love that. I love that. With the mindset thing, we just sometimes have to be careful that action is different to decision. Yes. When you yeah. decide to do something, the brain rewards you, doesn't it? Like yeah. you've done it. Like I, I see this many Sundays where people I know say, Yes, I'm gonna go to the gym on Monday. And they get all happy about the fact that they decide they're gonna go to the gym. Monday, yeah. gym visited. Uh -uh. Um, but they're so happy on the Sunday because brain is saying, Yeah, well done you. Yeah, oh, gym on Monday. Yeah. You've used the word action so deliberately so many times through this podcast. Yes. It's like uh, people should be picking up on that, but just in case, yes. I thought I'd <laughs> underline it. Yeah, um, you've got to go and do the hard shit. And I'm sorry, you know, sometimes people are like, I want a coach or a mentor and I just want them to tell me what to do and it's going to be really easy. All this shitty marketing out there that's like, oh, it's effortless, like make 10K months and like you don't have to do any of this. Don't, don't. I'm really sorry. It's just, that's a podcast episode in itself, but like oh. I'm just so tired of the nonsense and the, the, the it's just it's just really clever marketing. That's all it is. It, Look at the marketing, try to learn from that, but don't get... Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, so you've said you've got to influence over a million people getting yes. sales. I love that. Absolutely love that. Um, and maybe, I mean, hopefully you've influenced some people who are listening to this. Um, yeah, I hope so. Where can they get in touch with you? Yeah, sure. So... To explore, because you, you were just touching the surface of this stuff. So where can they where can yeah. get in touch? So LinkedIn is my best platform. That's where I post every single day. Um, I have a mailing list and... Um, webinars and all sorts of there's a toolkit on there there's lots of resource on my linkedin that you can go in and look for and that's all for free and i show up pretty much daily on there uh sometimes twice a day if you're lucky <laughs> so that's like the the best platform to go to 
if you're not on LinkedIn, my website, because again, the podcasts are linked to that and there's testimonials and there's some videos on there. So that's um, www.saleslady.co.uk. Cool. We'll put links to both of those into the show notes anyway. So yeah. just just scroll below, click on that, and they can, they can get straight through to you. So. Brilliant. And I'll give awesome. you a link to the sales evaluation toolkit oh. as well. Oh, yes, that one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That <laughs> is going to help you if you're at the stage where you're having sales conversations. You're obviously going to want to maximise them, especially if you're in a slump. Well, you're going to want to maximise them anyway. And this is relevant if you're BDM, account manager, sales, but you work for someone or you work for yourself. And the sales evaluation toolkit will tell you exactly where you're losing your client in the conversation, what you can do about it. Awesome. Again, link link to that below. So, hello. Yeah. Thank you so much for coming on. I mean, that that is a very useful set of actions, which, you know, if someone needs yeah. to, to do that, get yeah. on with it. Get on with it, we say. Here yeah, here. just yeah. do the hard shit. I'm really sorry, but like, you're just going to have to do it. That's the only way. No one else can do this for you. No one's coming. No one's saving it. It's you. And I've got you and I back you because I've done this stuff. These aren't just four tips that I thought, oh, I'm just going to like see what chat GPT comes out with. <laughs> this is like my stuff that I have been through that I've taken clients through. I could tell those are hard earned. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, they're hard earned. Oh, brilliant. Thanks. Thank you so much for, for coming on. Oh, thank you, Fred. Thanks for having me. Thank you, everyone. Thank you for listening to the Sales Today podcast with me, your host, Fred Copestake. I hope you've enjoyed what you heard today. If you did, please get in touch and hit subscribe. And remember, you can take the collaborative selling scorecard for free to check out how your sales approach works in today's environment. You'll find it in the show notes.